breaking news. I want to talk to Mark News, want to talk to you. I told I say, not be only mock news I'm going to do now. I'm going to ask people questions so that our ordinary people could understand what did happen for Nigeria because they won't kill us with big, big grammar. We hear say a lot of things they happen for, which is a lot of katakata, they happen for Bayasa, about election, certificate, a lot of things. P uh, APC first win, they say the deputy governor get problem. Now, nah, PDP day. PDP won't say problem does he day. So, one young man will sit there among the people who will contest for the election. He day with us for studio today. Won't ask a question. So that we go know what did they happen for Bayasa. Because some Bayasa people, we don't know even know what did they happen. So if you want to know what did they happen for Bayasa, the truth, so you better watch this thing. So our brother day here, and I want to make we know who the guy be. We could lay one explain itself. So, my bro, I beg, introduce yourself so that my mock news fan and Bayasa people feel know who you be. Well, uh, my name is VJ Eldred yes. Bama. I am the candidate of Liberation Movement. You say candidate of what? Liberation okay. movement. That is the name of my party. Hmm? Liberation movement is the name of my political party. I, amongst others, contest hell on the 16th day of November 2019, okay. right in Bayelsa State, across every polling unit. And um, I I am at the election petition tribunal uh, in Abuja. I'm actually speaking to you right okay. from the federal capital territory of Nigeria. Yeah. Okay. So uh, they tell us, even me, if I read about them, about the Wahala we did for the election for Bayasa, they say on a get problem between the deputy governor of PDP about certificate so if you tell us something about that thing because bayasa bayasa won't know about what did they really happen so if you tell us anything about them okay um amongst amongst uh, a few grants that uh, uh, necessitate the disqualification of a candidate uh, submission of false information of fundamental nature to the umpire of elections, which is INEC, the Independent National Electoral Commission, if you submit false information to the, to the commission, it is a ground for disqualification. And uh, that is what the current deputy governor of Bielsa State, uh, Senator Lawrence Rujako, did. He submitted uh, false information in regards to with uh, uh, with regards to his NYSC exemption yes. certificate, yes. Uh, if you must attach, if you must if you must attach certificates to enable your qualification, they must be genuine. They must be re they must be real. They shouldn't be fake. They shouldn't be fault. Have you shouldn't have fault in them. Nor should they be forged. But he tendered documents um, that are forged. And it says that we all know, according to law, the um, the NYC Act, that NYC only gives exemption, discharge, or exclusion certificates and letters to only people who have graduated. He, he we discovered 
that his NYC exemption certificate came before he graduated. His NYC exemption certificate is dated 2nd of February, 1998. Meanwhile, his degree certificate from the University of Science and Technology in River State was dated 3rd of February, 1998. Yes. Yes. Now, it is not, it is just unbelievable that somebody will get an NYC discharge or an exemption or an exclusion before the person will graduate. That is completely against the law. So that is false information, you know, that he had presented to Tiane. So we had to take the matter to court. Like, look, you know, you see, the truth is, those who want to be our leaders must be men and women of integrity. They must be patriotic. They must be trustworthy. Now, if you can submit a document that is forged, a document that is false, it means that you have character issue and somebody like that should not be our leader in any capacity, how much more to the position of the deputy governor of my state. So I approached the election petition tribunal that um, he has, uh, from records before us, submitted to INEC that he has um, submitted false information. So we have dragged him to the court to prove, to let, to tell the rest of the rest of the world and by essence why he did that to enable his qualification. And uh, I can tell you for free that in the past few months we've been at the tribunal and that we have proved our matter beyond reasonable doubt. Um, we also know that um, he submitted various documents apart from the NYSC exemption certificate. And uh, these various documents contain names of different, we have proven that before the under record. We have close to 15 different names, you know, that he submitted. And he's claiming all those done a change of name. You have to go through digital, then newspaper publication, and hello, hello, you there hear me? Hello, yes, yes. hello. Okay. Yes, yes. Uh, we okay, understand what you did talk now. So you did talk say uh, his certificate not today. Okay. So, but I want to ask you one question. You sure say you go film win this case? between PDP and your party, you sure say you will win? Well, I believe in the judiciary of Nigeria. I believe that the judiciary is evolving, just as our democracy is evolving, you know, um, in all aspects of democracy is evolving. And that is why I am in this, making to make sure that I am a catalyst. I am also part of the people that made our democracy to grow and have the strength that it should have on paper. It should be in reality. So I believe in the strength of the judiciary. I believe in the independence of the judiciary. And besides that, I know that I have a very good case. This case is on its merits. You know, it is clear we have proved beyond reasonable doubt. Now, what you need to know is the responsibility is on me to prove beyond reasonable doubt, to leave all that out, that this document is not real. And we have done that. A lot of witnesses have come on, on myself. I, I, I was in the box, you know, to give my testimony. Hello. I not just understand the network, you know, Nigeria, where they get network problem. So, we they understand what you they talk. I hope you, they, you see they hear me. I didn't hear uh -huh. you. I didn't so, hear you. I want to ask you another question again. Since when I start this case, I hope which kind of problem you they get? You they get any problem with anybody or since when you want to start this case? Any wahala or anything? I hope you understand what you are talk. We understand the yes, 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 yes. I understand you. I understand you. We've had a series of 
of problems, so to say, you know, in cause of this matter. Um, a few persons have called me, you know, um, and have asked me to, to pull out, take some money and pull out. And I've told them, no, I, I believe in integrity and maintaining my integrity. I, I want no, to Hold on first. Hold on, Abeg. Sorry to say. You say that they won't offer you money to, to back out from the case. And you say yes. no. Yes. I said no. Uh, I said no. I said no. Um, a lot of phone calls, a lot of persuasions, even uh, through family and friends, you know, and I stood my ground. I said no. I was also threatened, a lot of uh, assassination plans. I had, at the point, I had to run to somewhere to hide, you know. Um, and also threats and direct threats and indirect threats uh, on my life, you know, for me just to leave the matter, you know. And uh, I said, no, I said, uh, if you succeed in killing me, oh, good for you. But I would not relent. I would not backtrack, you know, on what I'm pursuing. I'm doing this for the future of Nigeria. I'm doing this for my children, my children's children and their age mates. We have to set the record straight. We have to start somewhere. And we have started already. We don't have any other country. Nigeria is a great country, but led by visionless leaders. So we cannot come in and do exactly the same thing they have been doing in the past 50, 60 years and expect a different result. So no amount of money can make me backtrack. No amount of threats can make me backtrack. I, I'm going to, the, to before the before the tribunal um, the tribunal before the judiciary. Okay, okay, and let the judiciary bro. Okay, pass okay. It's you say cool. if they give you money now, you not go back at like if they give you money like one million dollars, two million dollars, you not go back at. You will still continue to the fight. Let me tell you one thing. Let me tell you one thing. Let me tell you one thing. I ask myself the question: How much money can they give to me? that will build all the infrastructures that Nigeria needs? How much money can they give to me as an individual that will improve the standard of the living of the people of Nigeria, especially my state, by also state? It's my, my state is the smallest state and unarguably the richest state in Nigeria. But the level of poverty in my state is alarming and is depressing. How much money can they give to me, VJ Opama, as an individual that will trickle down to everybody in Bayelsa State and lift the standard of their living? How much money can they give to me that will stop building floating toilets, that people will defecate in the same water they use for laundry, the same water they use for cooking? How much money can they give to me? No way. There's no amount of money they can give to me. If they have that money, why not use that money to develop the state? Why give it to me? Why offer it to me? You said there was no money in this state. But suddenly you have money to offer to me to leave the matter. I don't understand. Okay. So no amount okay, of bro. money. And again, okay, we're not to get time. We're not to get time. Sorry to say, we're not to get time. And I've also enjoyed the No worry, we're not to get time. So there's no amount of money time. that you can present to me and say, oh, you're going to enjoy for the rest of your life. No worry, I've enjoyed a little bit. And I know what suffering means. And I can't watch other people continue to suffer when I know that I have the solutions solving the problems that this will have. And that, those will mean money to leave this matter. We have to clean our system. Clean the entire system. Hello? Uh, the network, the network not be here. You know, say me, I know they subscribe plenty because of the way I be. I hope you they hear me. Hello? You they hear me? Hello? You they hear me now? Hello? I you. Okay, good, good, good. I'll see you. Uh, good, the good, next good. question I be this. Like, if you win this case now, what do you go feed do for Bayasa? For Bayasa people? What do you, you get for Bayasa now? Since you they talk, say you want, what do be your plan for Bayasa? In, in case so, you feel win, no. But that's how people like no. Mm. Hello, you hear me? Okay first, all, okay, first of all, my prayers before the court. I am praying that number one, 
my prayers before the court. I am praying that number one, that PDP, Governor Doyodiri, and Deputy Governor Lawrence Orujakbo should be disqualified and then fresh election declared for the candidates that are qualified to contest. That is the first step. That is what I want to do. That's what I want the courts to do for me and for the people of Bielsa State. Now, the second thing will have to be on the hands of Bielsans that they should vote for me. Before I can do anything for the state, they will have to vote for me. So, but that will be campaign, so I don't want to campaign. Yeah, I have to be very cautious. I don't want to campaign. Mm -hmm. But now, what will I do for my people? Yes. The number one thing is great leadership. That is what we lack. By your state does not lack resources, either in human form or in material form. What by your state lacks is leadership. So the number one thing I am bringing to my people is leadership. And that leadership has ingredients. The number one ingredient of that leadership is vision. When I say vision, I'm not talking about vision to build a house for myself or drive the most expensive car by myself or for my family. Vision to develop the economy of my state and every other thing that follows suit to improve the standard of the living of the people of my state to provide security like i said every other thing follows suit that the number number two thing is patriotism if you have the vision as a leader but if you're not patriotic if you don't have the people in your heart if you don't love your land unconditionally, there is no way your vision can even materialize. So every other thing falls in between these two, the vision and patriotism. And of course, I've always said one thing, in the government that I lead, nobody would be above the law. And that is the reason why I do not have godfathers. That's the reason why in my political career, I have decided not to have godfathers. Now that does not mean that we don't need the support of people to get to the position we want so that we can effect the positive changes in all aspects of the lives of the people of Bayelsa okay. State. We need everybody okay. to work Okay, with because us. of time, no okay, time, no time. time. I am not saying I leave you, you to talk to them. Selfish, talk to them. From the government. <laughs> press, press. Okay, I want to ask you another question. I want to ask you another question. So where you take the get money, take the run your campaign, they run this... Uh, court to court while you know say you all know say our lawyer they know they go anywhere for free so where you did they get money to the fight this fight until they run all these things then but as people like one no well first of all that is a very beautiful question in fact this question the answer to this question has been the reason why many young visionary and patriotic people you know have refused to go into politics the funds you know to push your your um, your ambition so to say through well first of all i have to save up little little money you know our leaders have controlled the country in a way where good people uh, true leadership will not come into play because they deprive good people of funds they bankrupt the country they make it difficult for people to make money they make it difficult for the living standard to improve so good people cannot raise money to contest election so it took me a while to save up Secondly, friends and family. In fact, some persons donated up to as little as 200 naira. They were like, somebody said to me, look, this 200 naira, eh? at least you go buy you small egg, egg, egg time. They will take yes. me some phone calls. This is my token. This is what I can give. Now, apart from the money, people work with their heart, with their body, their time. Because remember that the money you spend in the in election, is most, most of the time it goes into hiring the services of people. But some people volunteered these services. They were cutting the costs that money could have met because we did not have the money. Now, even in, on this, in, in this matter, we are on the tribunal, like you mentioned, the lawyers have to be paid. Number one thing is I have very vibrant and young lawyers who took up this matter without a dime from me. They said, look, this is a good matter and that we have, as young people have, to start to correct the anomalies in our country. And this is an opportunity for us. And so long as you're ready to lead the way, we will follow you. 
Yes, besides the, the professional fees, not like they don't need it or they don't deserve it. They do. We have to still raise money to give to them. But they did not put that money in the forefront to say, if you don't pay me my professional fees, I will not do this matter. They've been working for months and we've not even paid them a dime, but we have to raise money to pay them. Now, we have to file processes. It costs money to file processes to move from one place to the other. If you've been in litigation, you know, especially election petition, it costs plenty of money. Friends and family have been supporting, who have been donating as much as they can. Those who believe, those who believe. I have a friend of mine who sold his generator, you know, just to raise money for this matter. Someone sold his stabilizer, his electric uh, electricity regulator, you know, just to raise funds to pursue this matter. Well, we still, honestly, we're still asking. Instead of having... Uh, corrupt individuals giving you billions to run matter like this so they can control your government will prefer to have genuine hearts donate, support us in every way they can for the sake of justice, for the sake of not just Bayelsa state, but Nigeria at large. We can start with Bayelsa and begin to correct the abnormal things in our country to perfect our democracy, that before we know it, our children are inheriting a better democracy than we came and saw. So we're asking for support from all over, everywhere. Just do the little you can. It's, it's quite capital intensive. It's quite capital intensive, election petition. That's one of the reasons why some people do not go to uh, a pet election petition. They don't go to the tribunal, even, if they, even when they have a very good matter at hand because the money is not there. But we had, as they say, take, we took a leap of faith. Like, we don't have the money, but let's venture into this. And so far, we've come a long way of the matters have closed. We just finished our written addresses, waiting for adoption, and then wait for judgment. But then we know that election petitions do not end at the tribunal level. Uh, um, the, those who will lose will have to go to the appeal and all the way to the Supreme Court, and that also cost money. So yes, we need all the support we can get. Okay, okay. So I want to ask you this one: in case, in case now they disqualify the election, now you understand? That's okay. May they start again? May they revote? Will it be your chance? Say you can win the election? If they say may they revote, I just like one no. You know, say people like one no. You sure say you feel weak? Well, there is a trend that is happening in Nigeria, and I'm happy to be part of that trend. If I predicted this trend some 10 years ago, it's going to get to a point where Nigerians will stop voting on party line. Nigerians will start voting based on individual. And honestly, we saw this happen in the Bayelsa state in the past election, that the uh, David Lyon won the election. I contested the election. And as a sportsman, I will tell you this for free, that the Lion category to won the elections based not because it came from a party that is big, but because of the individual. I, I think APC had a very good shot on that, picking a candidate like him, you know, who was, who appeals to the people, okay? Now, that's how he won the election. Now, if we're going to a fresh election, I tell you what, because of this matter we have taken up, a lot of Bielsen's never believe that there are young people in this country, how much more a Bielsen that can stand for the truth, maintain his integrity, even with all the offers of money, with all the threats to his life, sees through these grants and is pursuing a matter like this in court. That alone has developed trust in the people of Bielsen State. And I tell you today, if we go back to the polls, if we go back to the polls, I tell you, Bielsen should massively vote for me because they found the leader we have been looking for a leader with integrity, a leader with ideas and a vision. In fact, interestingly, most of them have not gone back to my Facebook posts. They've gone back to the debates we had during the elections. They've not seen, oh, so this man has been the, we hear all this while and we were blinded by certain activities. Oh, wow, how we made mistake this time around. This is the man we want. And by us are ready. In fact, some people have been calling me and said they started cleaning up their voters' cards. They're cleaning them, keeping them in safe places to cast their votes okay. for me. That one a nice one. So before we go, so what will be your advice for youth when one come into politics? Where they fear because of Godfather and the rest. So which kind of advice you will get for them? Because a lot of us, even me, I want to be a politician. I want to be a local government member of my area. You understand about the fear? So what do you get to advise people will get mind to do politics? But because of the, you understand what I mean? 
So before we go, yeah, yeah, the the advice I have for you and others like you who want to come into mainstream politics in Nigeria is this: number one, do not believe the fallacies that you've been told over the years that you must be a billionaire, you must come from a big party to contest election and win. That is not true. We have we have records of people who contested election on smaller parties and have won, though if though not yet that the president or or, or or governor, but smaller parties that have won. All right. And what I want to tell you is that the first thing to do is to identify your like minds, your like minds, and there are out there. That's just the truth. There are out there. Then try your best to convince people. But above all, maintain your integrity. Be focused. Come up with a vision. Come up with a plan. Not the, the regular manifesto you hear from political parties. They just blab it, but then they don't have it in their heart. Take time. I, I developed 78 policies and programs for my state. Then I came up with a 15-point agenda that covers every area of Bielsa, uh, Bielsa State when it comes to administration. You know, so prepare. They have to, our, our young people have to prepare very well. And of course, the Electoral Act makes it clear that you can sort for public funding, crowdfunding to support your election. Go out there. Do not be shy. I walked from door to door. I approached people. I did pamphlets. I said, and I put an account number, my campaign organization account number. I said, look, Video Poma Campaign Alliance. And I called it an alliance, not an organization, because we are relating with the people. It's, it belongs to everybody else and it belongs to all of us. We are coming in to work together. And I put my account number on my, on my flyers or my banners, and I got a lot of insults. Some say this man is stupid. They don't play politics like this in Nigeria. He has to take it abroad to go and play this kind of politics. And, but the truth is, the big shots, they always call the super pack. We have the super pack in Nigeria. The big shots come together in hotels or in conferences, and they donate money, sometimes even cash, to the candidates of their choice. So why can't the citizens do the same thing? Take advantage of the electoral law, uh, certain section 91 of the electoral law, and take advantage of it and do the same thing. So young people like us who want to go into politics, if you take advantage of the electoral law and ask for support, ask for donations, do not be shy, ask for donations. And then that is a step forward. And it's not as expensive as you think. It's only expensive when you're buying votes and buying votes is illegal. It's only expensive when you're bribing electoral officers. That is illegal. In fact, where you spend huge amount of money in Nigerian politics is actually an illegal thing to do. So stop doing the illegal things. Stop thinking about doing the illegal things. Do the right things. And you spend less money and achieve much more as a young candidate. And let's put so, the rest together. It doesn't matter what so party you come from. Thank you. They like me, they know yeah. So before I go, go, before we go stop this thing, we did give you mind, mind, you don't fear kidnapping, you don't fear killing. Do you mind they follow like a whole PDP? You know, say Nigeria, you know, you know what I mean. You understand what I'm saying now? You know, say PDP na giant party like APC. So what it give you mind to follow these people they drag for court. So you know they fear, like say they go kidnap you. I just not be saying that they kidnap you, I just they ask because I waiting some people they fear. Say ah, if you follow this Godfather, all those people that they do something, they go. So what did they give you that mind? Say ah, nothing like that will fear happen. We just want to know before we go. Well, I um, I understand. Uh, those are concerns that a lot of this. Those are. And those concerns have been raised by friends and family. If I've been advised my some of my friends to stop this and I'm doing that, I'm gonna get killed. But then what inspires me, as you said, the thing that give me mind is the suffering in my state. People are suffering. Children die every day because of lack of proper medical care. Children cannot access good quality education because of it, it just makes me go crazy. And these things are always on the forefront of my heart that I fear no other thing, I feel no other thing, no other emotions than the emotions that my people are suffering and the only way to get them out of 
The suffering is to do the right thing, which is what I am doing. One day. So if I eventually die in this cause, at least I am dying for something that I have believed in. I am dying for fighting for my people and my generations and the generations beyond me that are coming. So I fear, I don't fear death. I fear nothing. I just have this. This is what inspires me, the suffering of my people and the desire to change and better their standard so of no, living. No, no, sorry to come in. So nobody will no, give no, you mind. So no. Nobody will mind you. Nobody will give you mind. Nobody, 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 nobody. Like I told you, the people that give me mind are those that are suffering. They don't deserve it. They don't deserve it. So I would rather die fighting for them. Okay, than okay. So my hands and, because and say, of time, do when you are next court, when you are go court next. Well, at this point, we haven't uh, taken a date for adoption, but we're going to apply very soon uh, for adoption of the final address. Then uh, we'll get uh, a date for judgment. So I want to believe that before this month okay. runs out, we'll get so, judgment. Before and, um, before we go, we know, we waiting be your message to Bayasa, to Bayasa people. Waiting be your message. Waiting you like tell them before we go, because no time again. My message to Bayasa. My message to Bios is yeah. My message to Biosense is that politics, it's a game or a venture set for us to develop as a people, and for us to develop, there must be opposition. It is not a do or die thing. This is not war. This is for the sake of the development of our region, of our state, and of our country. So nobody should take this thing personally and build acrimonies and hatred for one another. We are all doing this. There is a saying that iron sharpeneth iron. We brush each other clean. That's what we should see. Nobody should see me as an enemy. My supporter should not see the PDP and the support of fathers, and we were all related. We have one purpose. That is what we should have. One purpose is to see Bios State takes its place that it actually So nice deserves. one, nice one. So my brother, we want to just thank you for your time for mock news. So time to time, would they like one call? Would they call you so that you would update us of what did they happen for Bios? Because mock news fans go like no. So thank you for your time. And uh, may God bless you, and we wish you good luck for your, how did they call it, pursue <laughs> of your, you understand what I mean? Uh? So you understand. So, my brother, we'll talk next for the other time. You understand what I mean? Uh? So no time. So my mock news fan, I already know who's in there yet. I mean, mock, uh, Panara mock news. So next week or next month, I'll come with another interview with another politician. Because now we could want to make sure say we they break everything down so that the common Nigerians would they understand what did they do for the government as not me that we call the killers with English. Forget about our brother with they speak English since we, the water they ask the question, you already know what they ask for. So see you now next week. God bless you. Parara, the talk, the bitter truth, bitter truth, the pain, the bad people, mock news, 